Uh, that's a little difficult. I'm, uh, I was born in Israel nearly yeah. 70 years ago, 67 years ago. Uh, I traveled since I was 20. Mm -hmm. I lived in Europe for about 10 years, mostly in Denmark. I moved to the U.S. in 84. I lived there for 35 years, half my life. And I came back to Denmark last year. I left the U.S. and my daughter, Adora. Mm. And I, I came back to Denmark because the U.S. now is really crazy. And I mm. couldn't live there anymore. I had a very unusual life full of many, many hundreds of unique experiences. Uh, I've done many things. I had many occupations and jobs. I made a lot of money with real estate uh, the last 20 years in, this, in the United States, California. I've done many other things that are much more interesting and much more important to me. So basically the way you could describe me is basically just an old dad which is really how the project came to be and how it should be represented because I'm not a real estate guy doing this project and I'm not anything else. I'm really just a dad. It started on complete flukes. Uh, you know, when she was maybe a year or two, we went somewhere, there was a cartoonist who drew, you know, quick sketches of people and it cost $10. And then I thought I'll get another one and another one. And before I knew it, I had 10 and 20 and 30. And then I thought, wow, I was searching online. I, I, I didn't see any. There are many parents who promote their kids in many different ways, but I, I thought there was, I couldn't find up till today, any child parent who was used as a model for artworks to such a degree. And so after I had 10 and 20 and 30, I just kept going. Um, and for a while I was, I spent over 50,000 American dollars on this project through the years. Uh, I don't do it anymore because now most of the artwork that I get are sent as contribution, free contributions through Instagram and others. Yeah. But I spend a lot of money and I, after a while I started building it and the more I build it, the more parts there were. And every once in a while there would be an artist who would want to do a series of 10 or 20 um, artworks in a certain style. So I would put them in a certain, in a different way uh, or a different place. So there was dozens and dozens of websites, each for different artists. And I thought all those could be at one point developed into, uh, you know, a marketing plan that has dozens and dozens of parts. And had we, uh, it's amazing to me, and I've been doing it for 10 years and trying and figure out why this project hasn't caught on. Um, it should have, could have, would have. It could have really become uh, a na uh, household name many, many, many years ago, and it should have, I think. I can't imagine, I can't believe why it didn't. There must be something inherently flawed in it. Uh, and I couldn't figure out what it is, but you know, I tried for 10 years to build it as if it's going to be. So there's, there's never, there's not a single negative thing about it. I never put a bad picture of her or bad experience or even when her mom left, I, I just made a post. We are now alone and I never said anything bad about her mom or any negative. I tried to build it to something that later on she could pick up and really recall, go back, because kids don't remember what happened. But since I started documenting her life from her birth, literally every single day, what she did is documented there. So she could go back when she grows up and start appreciating it and really recall. We had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of 
unique experiences that you can go back and relive. And the artwork reflect all of it. People would draw her as a baby, as a toddler, as a four years old, and many of the experiences that she had, they were just recreated in art. It's really funny. I leave as much as possible the personal part of the story unpublished as much as possible. Part of it is also because Adora, of course, deserve her privacy um, and her real life, her real mm. I, IRL life is un completely unaffected by the project and everything that I've done for her. Um, while we were living together since the time she was a baby until 10 years old, until last year, uh, she knew that I've done the project the last five years full time, and that's all I did. I didn't work. Uh, I lived on my savings from real estate. So she knew that that's all I do. All I do, and she didn't care so much not for the art project, but you know there are parts of it that she was fully participating with and she loved. You know we traveled a lot. We had a lot of experiences together which I incorporated into the project. Um, the art itself, she didn't care for it. I was hoping that the project will really create a platform for Adora herself to, ex to grow out of. And I actually prepared dozens and dozens and dozens of sub programs for commercial and for future development, um, none of them came to be. Um, you know, I hired marketing people, I hired uh, web people, I hired all kind of uh, sales gurus to try to help me. I paid a lot of money to different people. I was in sales and marketing myself, but uh, I paid a lot of money to all kinds of people. Everybody had their own idea. I developed website, different website through the years, each one to fit. Nothing worked. I, uh, nobody cared about it. And it, it was disappointing, but you know, I knew that I did it for myself more than anything and for Dora more than anything. So that's what it is. Uh, unless something happens tomorrow and it, you know, it goes on television and people uh, adopt it, uh, it will be interesting if it happen when it happens now because our life has moved. If it would happen two years ago, uh, I could take Adora as she was and the project and plug it into 30 different spots that were ready to go into, you know, becoming multi-multi-billion dollar project, but that didn't happen. I mean, everything was in place to go. I had, I mean, I a trade, the trade name Adora Levin and everything else, the, was in place. I mean, I had marketing plans for everything. There were books and movies and yeah. scripts and stories that people would write. And um, there was a lot that, yeah, I mean, a lot. Once, once there was somebody who picked it up and who would have picked it up and say, hey, I can develop it into an international brand, we could have literally within 90 days, plug it in and, and do you know the, the Grumpy Cat, for example? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Grumpy Cat made over $100 million in the first year like that. And it's really very similar to that. It could have just take it and push it sideways everywhere, but it didn't happen. And if it were to happen today, oh well, we'll see, it will be different.
Until recently, I did not expose any personal information on Instagram, for example. Um, and I didn't want to share any of that. Uh, but about a year, but what happened was that Adora's mom left when she was four. I was nearly full time single dad for six years. Uh, Adora was with her mom on the weekends. She stayed with me during the week. It was very difficult and I continued the project and taking care of her for 10 years. And a year ago, I decided that Adora now is so old enough, 10 years, and intelligent enough, and hopefully she will survive me moving. It's not easy for her, and it's definitely not easy for me, but uh, I did it, and I uh, mentioned it on Instagram, and I decided eventually that I must leave this, the state, the political situation in the States have been so difficult the last four years and I didn't know what to do. Eventually I, I said, in order to save myself, I just have to leave. And it's true. Uh, today, when I started it 10 years ago in 2010, it wasn't as much as an issue. Today, uh, it's practically accepted that most kids and most parents have online presence. So everybody has it. I, I did try to really protect as much as possible and... Um, it's out there it can't it can't be erased so sure i decided to do it and uh, i tried to do it with with the vision toward the future so that when she grows up it wouldn't be something she would be ashamed or embarrassed or um that her, neg her negatively so I think even though I did expose a lot of her stories out, I tried to keep it as as positive as po as possible. Mm. I think uh, right now she's a little bit under the influence, but I think, and she may not like it when she grows up, uh, even if the project does not become famous and make her famous. But um, I think that when she grows up, she will appreciate all the effort um, in many aspects. I mean, first of all, the fact that she's really an inspiration to so many thousands and thousands of people who didn't know her personally. I think that will mean something positive only. Um, the fact that I documented her whole life for her so that when she grows up, she will be able to go back and pull memories that she probably wouldn't remember otherwise. I think that would be a positive thing. It depends on how she develops. She was a very, she's been a very positive, uh, unique and exceptional child. So if she keeps doing it, I think she will see it, the value of it as she grows up. Uh, if she becomes deranged, of course, it will affect her negatively. Mm. Is she your only daughter or only child? Yes, I, I never wanted to have children. And I never thought I would, and now more than ever. But when I was 56, her, my girlfriend, her mom, convinced me that if we're, going to have, if, I, if we're going to have a child, she will stay with me forever. And... I agreed to do that. I really regret it, but... Well, for, for someone that didn't want children or, or feels that they regret it, you, you certainly put and dedicate a lot of time into, into her and this, this project. Uh, yes, but... because it, it, you know, once she was born, 
she became the most important thing in my life. And all my, I had many identities throughout my life, different identities, dozens. And this became my most cherished and, and really deep felt identity as a father. And I felt that I would always, that's the most important thing I, I am and can do. So this project is really a reflection of that. The fact that I now left her is is incredible to me and heartbreaking. Mm. But I still feel that this is still the most important thing in my life. And it's funny because now as I write my biography and I realize that I had I had many 50 chapters in my life, each one completely, completely different. I mean completely different i may send you uh, the stories just for you to read but they're not for publication for now but i had many different identities and experiences and uh, fatherhood is really the even more than the art project is the most important thing and now i'm not there anymore yeah i'm sorry if these bring up uh, difficult emotions Alan. Okay, I love to cry when it's sad, but it's true. <clears throat> oh yeah, it must be very difficult leaving your daughter, you know, basically halfway around the world uh, after all of that time and uh, dedication to the project and obviously her. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that would be difficult for anyone. Yeah. This is really one of the best and most beautiful and most appreciated works in the whole collection. Um, as you could read on the artist's page, I sent him a, solic uh, a solicitation letter and he responded two years later with the whole story and with the whole piece. Uh, I think it's one of the most beautiful ones. Um, the price was his price. The shop never went anywhere. When I rebuilt the website at one point about, I think it was 2015 or 16, or um, I opened the shop, I never sold any of those. And I, when I did the shop, I tried to do some cheap postcards and some middle size artworks. And I uh, had agreements with different artists of what to do. And I thought those are the ones that will go none of them goes and I never sold anything. This price was his price. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think I even took any commission. I just really wanted uh, one of his, one of the pieces to sell so that he can, so that I can have track record. And unfortunately it didn't work out, but this was his price that he charged for his work. So this was not a price that I arbitrarily picked, but uh, I said, if I can help you sell it, what will you charge? And this is what he did. Concept that I put on the list, on the wish list, Adora spontaneously combusting. And it was there for maybe three years before this guy picked it up. So it was not something that many people thought they could develop, but I think this is fantastic. Uh, I was just wondering what inspired this one in particular as well. I don't know. I, you know, it's from the list. Allen Ginsberg is on the list. Somebody picked it up. They picked whatever photo they, they, uh, you know, they wanted. They picked a photo of him. They just created this mixture. Uh, the beautiful thing for me is that very often, every day when I get a new artwork, I don't know what it will be. Often it's, you know, the same as the others, but sometimes it's just completely new or regional and beautiful and unique uh this is really it just came this guy also did over 120 pieces and wow uh, uh many of them are beautiful i love this one you're right yeah i mean with with a lot of these um 
yeah, I was just interesting your curatorial kind of um, how your curatorial practice, should I say? Like, I mean, I don't know if you want to talk about that a little bit because at the moment, with with a lot of your with your answers and and how you're uh, talking about the artworks, it's interesting that you almost um, a lot of it is down to the artists. A lot of it's down to um, what they send in if they go on the wish list. If they don't, I mean, do you have like a method to the madness, if you if I can put it like that? where you know you have like an idea of what you want what you don't want and what your kind of focus is because there are themes that i think join a lot of these no no i think that the the breadth of the, pro, the the fact that it's so wide is mostly because i let you know thousands of different artists to do whatever they want they just get something take a photo, any photo you want out of thousands and do whatever you want. You know, if somebody would put a nudity or obscenity or a fascist image or something like this, I will not post it and I will not publish it. Or if it's something that is really ugly or bad or low quality or uh, low bro or something like this, I, I mean, I will not publish it. But usually I just let them do, you know, you can take a photo of, of the child, you can do whatever you want with it. Uh, I think that's what gives the the project some of its wide, wide breadth. Yeah, okay, that's really interesting, thank you. With that, on terms of like, obviously, uh, you know, allowing everyone to do things, that obviously has kind of downsides, you know, in obviously you having to manage it and being able to control what goes in, what goes out. I mean, with this image, one of the reasons I brought it up is to me, um, it shows some concern uh, because like Allen Ginsberg, although I know he's a very famous poet and people love his work and obviously he's done some very seminal pieces. Uh, he's also had some dodgy past as well. Um, he was a card carrying member of NAMBLA, uh, which is the North American Man Boy Love Association and even been very active in his, uh, in that community with trying to talk about children and uh, ages as well and I was just wondering if yeah you knew about that and maybe in light of that would you kind of maybe rethink this image I guess no I didn't know I know that he was homosexual I didn't know he was pedophile and numblist uh, yeah but I wouldn't I, I didn't know it and even if I did I wouldn't change it no Thank you.